Good morning. Today we're going to talk about section 2.2 in Math 111. Section 2.2 is entitled Graphing Linear Equations in Two Variables. Let me write that down. Chapter 2, Section 2, Graphing Linear Equations. I'm just going to shorthand it and call it graphing lines. Graphing linear equations in two variables. All right, I'm going to assume that we all know how to plot points from our first course, or previous courses in algebra. You'll recall the xy plane, basically a set of coordinate axes, y coordinates, and x coordinates. determining every point in the xy plane. All right, the xy axes break up the coordinate plane, the xy plane, into four what we call quadrants. And we label them so, q1, q2, q3, and q4. In the first quadrant, well, you'll notice the intersection of the xy coordinates is referred to as the origin. And in the first quadrant, you'll notice x values are positive and y values are positive. x is positive because you're right of 0 on the x-axis, and y is positive because you are above the x-axis in that quadrant. Okay? So first quadrant, both x values and y values are always positive. In the second quadrant, you'll notice x values are left of 0, but y values are still above the x-axis. So x is negative, y is positive in quadrant 2 for all points in that quadrant. In the third quadrant, x is negative, and y is also negative for all points in this quadrant. And in the fourth quadrant, x is positive and y is negative. Okay? All right, I want to talk about get another screen here. I want to talk about the midpoint formula for a line segment. How would you compute the midpoint of a line segment if you are given coordinates of two points that determine a line segment? All right. Let's say I've got a point P. Let's say I've got another point Q. Let's say this point P has coordinates that I'll label x1, y1. Let's say point Q has coordinates that I will label x2, y2, unspecified. If I want to consider this line segment, and I want to compute M, where I'll call M the midpoint, of that line segment. Please note, the midpoint formula tells us this, and this is what I might predict. The x-coordinate of the midpoint is the mean of the x-coordinates of the points you're given, and the y-coordinates of the midpoint, or the y-coordinate of the midpoint, is nothing more than the mean of the y-coordinates you were given in the segment. All right. So I can apply a very simple example. I'll say find the midpoint of the line segment with the following end points. I'll say minus 1, comma 8 and positive 5, comma 2. Well, to find the midpoint, I'll take the mean of the two given x-coordinates. So I add up the x-coordinates and divide by 2, and similarly add up the two y-coordinates and divide by 2. That gives me a midpoint of, let's say, minus 2, 5, oh no, five, minus 1 plus 5 is 4, and 4 over 2 is positive 2, and 8 plus 2 is 10. 10 over 2 is 5. So I claim the midpoint of those two points is 2, 5. Let me graph this just to see. 
Let's see, I can do it better here. I'm going to graph that line segment and graph those computed endpoints. And let's see if it really does look like it's true. I'll do the best I can. Can't really use a ruler on the tablet. The ruler writes on the tablet just like the pen does. All right, so y and x as given. Uh, minus 1, 8. Minus 1, comma, 8. Minus 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So when x is minus 1, y is a positive 8, right? That's one endpoint of the line segment I'm given. If x is 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, y is 2, puts me there. So 5, comma, 2 puts me there. Let me connect those two points and define that line segment. And we now check that midpoint that we computed is x equals 2, y equals 5. Let's see, does it work? 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yes, I claim that's good. m equals 2, 5 lands me right about here. And in, indeed, it does look reasonable to claim that that is the midpoint of the line segment for which the two endpoints were given. Okay? All right, so that's the midpoint formula. Let's get into some gra get into graphing some lines. Graph. Y equals minus one half x plus three. Okay, we're given a a line equation, an equation in x and y. A linear equation has no exponents working on it except for a one. So. We're good to go here. I'm going to make a table of values. In other words, to graph a line, at least initially, we'll need a table of values. And basically, I generate this table of values for x and corresponding y values in a trial and error fashion. I'll look at the equation. I'll see, is there any way I can conveniently uh, arrange things to come up with three unique coordinate values that solve this equation simultaneously? I'm looking for pairwise solutions, in other words. Uh, I see I'm multiplying x by minus a half here. I claim if I pick multiples of 2 for x, I can then solve for y pretty easily, right? For example, if x is 0, well, I know that y equals minus 1 half times 0 plus 3. Y must be computed according to this formula. Minus 1 half times 0 is 0, and 0 plus 3 is 3. So I know when x is 0, y is 3. There's a special name for this point. I'm going to call this the y-intercept of this line equation. It, anytime your x-coordinate is 0, you know you are on the y-axis somewhere. You're intersecting the y-axis, hence the name y-intercept. Let me pick another x value that's a multiple of 2. I pick multiples of 2, so I don't have to any cumbersome fraction arithmetic to deal with here. If x is 2, for example, let's try it. y equals minus 1 half times 2 plus 3. Minus 1 half times 2 is minus 1. Minus 1 plus 3 is positive 2. So we see when x is 2, y is 2. Let's try another multiple of 2. I'm going to pick negative 2. Negative 2 is a multiple of 2, is it not? I can then say y equals minus 1 half times minus 2 plus 3. And of course, minus 1 half times negative 2 is positive 1. And 1 plus 3 is, of course, 4. All right, so in these graphing line type exercises, you will want to generate at least three points. It takes two points to determine a line, but we usually go for a third confirming point to make sure I didn't make any mistakes in the previous two. So label the axes y and x. And let me get busy plotting these points. When x is minus 2, y is positive 4. Puts me about here. If x is 0, y is 3. Notice, when x is 0, you are intersecting the y-axis, hence the name y-intercept. When x is 2, 
y is 2 puts me here. And indeed, it looks reasonable to claim that these are collinear points. All right, sooner or later, I've got to stop cogitating points and uh, graph and see if I discern a pattern, and I certainly do. These points all look like they represent the same line. So I will label that line with the equation that generates it, label the coordinate axes, label the line, and be sure to put arrows on the end of the line to indicate that this behavior goes on forever. There are infinitely many points that will solve any line equation. We claim that three is good enough to graph any of them. Okay, three points, I mean. All right. Let's try another graph. Let's see, graph y equals one-third x plus one. All right, again, I hear y is solved for. It's not always so, as we'll see in the next example. But here I can pick y values that are multiples of three. I'd probably pick here multiples of three. I'm sorry, x values that are multiples of three. Because when I multiply by a third, I won't have any fractions to deal with. Right, let me try it here. I'll pick as values of x, 3, 0, and minus 3. Let me start with 0. 0 is everybody's favorite multiple of 3, especially when you're graphing lines. Make things a little easier, right? If x is 0, I can see now y equals 1. Right? If x equals 3, well, 1 third times 3 plus 1 is, of course, 1 plus 1, and that equals 2. So when x is 3, y is 2. How about when x equals minus 3? Well, I'll have, you know, I'll have 1 third. y then equals 1 third times minus 3 plus 1. Minus 3 times a third is negative 1, and negative pl 1 plus 1 is 0. All right, so when y, x is minus 3, y is 0. All right, I noticed before when my x-coordinate is 0, I'm going to call this a y-intercept, just as if my y-coordinate is 0, this is going to be an x-intercept. It's where I'm going to hit the x-axis. Let me go ahead and graph these points. I'll do it right next here. Hang on a minute, let me erase this. And I'll get a table of values generating a coordinate axis system. When x is minus 3, y is 0. I'm sorry, yes, when x is minus 3, y is 0. Yes, and that is my x-intercept. When x is 0, y is 1. And that is my y-intercept. When x is 3, y is 2. That'll put me up here. I call that a third confirming point. My x-intercept, let me label these. My x-intercept is minus 3, is comma, 0. My y-intercept here is 0, comma, 1. And this point is 3, comma, 2. Doesn't really have a special name. It certainly is on the line. All right, so if I've got three points and they're collinear, that's more than enough to determine a line. I label the axes, x and y. I label the line with the equation that generates it. And be sure there's arrows on either, point, either end of the line to indicate the infinite behavior of any line and its collection of points. Let's try another one. All right. Not all line equations are in the form y equals, as we'll see. Let's see, let me erase that. I'm going to graph two x, two x minus five y. See, I'm having some trouble here. Let me pause. 
All right, back again. Graph the following equation. 2x minus 5y equals 10. This is a line equation that's in standard form. Now, there are many forms of line equations that we're going to be talking about in this course. Standard form of a line equation, it looks typically like this. You've got a multiple of x plus or minus a multiple of y equals some constant. So a real multiple of x plus a real multiple of y equals a constant. So certainly we can see this line is in standard form. Well, let me write it down again. 2x minus 5y equals 10. Uh, I think I can use the intercepts to graph this line equation. Let's see. If x is 0, well, I can see that this term falls away. I'll be then left with this statement for which I can solve for y. So minus 5y equals 10, or y equals negative 2. So when x is 0, y is minus 2, and this, of course, I'm calling my y-intercept. When x is 0, you are a y-intercept. Okay? Let's see if I can find the x-intercept. In other words, I'll let y be 0 in this equation. 2x minus 5 times 0 equals 10, letting y be 0. Well, that will leave me with the equation 2x equals 10. And of course, x then equals 5. So when y equals 0, x equals 5. And of course, I'm going to call this the x-intercept. When y is 0, you are an x-intercept. And let's see if I can get another point, another a pair of coordinates on this line from this line equation. 2x minus 5y equals 10. I think I see something happening here. If I pick x as minus 5, that gives me a negative 10. And if I can get this next term to be a positive 20, I'm done because they have to add up to a positive 10, right? I think this does work. I'll get a minus 10. Minus 5 times minus 4 is plus 20. And minus 10 plus 20 is, of course, 10 and it checks. So when x is minus 5, as in here, y is minus 4, as in here, and we'll solve this line equation. All right, let me go ahead and graph this equation. Put it right over here. Let me true, I can do better. Hang on. When x is 0, y is minus 2. There I am. y-intercept. If x is 5, y is 0. x-intercept. If x is minus 5, y is minus 4. Puts me here. Indeed, I say this confirms that these two points are, three points are collinear. So I connect the dots, label the axes, label the line with the equation that generates it. And of course, make sure the line has arrows on either side, indicating there are infinitely many points on this line. All right, let's try another topic. I want to talk about horizontal and vertical lines. Let's see. Let's say I ask you to graph an equation that looks like this. Graph y equals 5. Now, as I'm sure you notice, x doesn't even appear in this equation statement. If I attempt to make a table of values, well, it becomes clear, no matter what points I pick, no matter what x-coordinates I pick, x, I'm sorry, y will always be 5 and 5 and 5. Right? This is really the set of all points in the xy plane that have a y-coordinates of 5. 
So I can just go up on my y-axis, draw a y-intercept of positive 5, and indicate a horizontal line through that y equals 5 value. All right, so the graph of the line y equals 5 is nothing more than a horizontal line that goes through the y-intercept of 5. Okay. All right, let's try... Well, I suppose we could generalize this. Nothing really sacred about 5 here. I could play this game with any constant. If you've got an equation of the form where y equals a constant, you can right away go ahead and graph the line. You know it's going to be a horizontal line with a y-intercept that equals that constant. So boil it down, y equals constant horizontal line. How about if I was to ask you to graph something like this, x equals minus 3. Well, just like in the last example, y doesn't appear in this equation at all. y can be any value, and x will always be negative 3, negative 3, negative 3. So this is nothing more than the set of all points in the xy plane that have x-coordinates of minus 3. In other words, x never changes in this line. x is constant. x is a constant minus 3. So what I can do is locate x equals minus 3 on the x-axis, and since x never changes, y can be anything, I can just go straight up and down from that x-intercept and draw a vertical line with the x-intercept of minus 3. I should label that line with the equation that generates it. x equals minus 3 is a vertical line. Vertical line with an x-intercept of minus 3, right? And just uh, very similar to the last example, just like y equals constant always gives you a horizontal line similarly here if you have a line equation that boils down to this statement x equals some constant right away you know you've got a vertical line x equals constant vertical line always okay let's try to graph something a little different I'll give you a graph, let's see, I'll give you an equation in standard form. Some multiple of x plus some multiple of y equals some constant. And I've got to use a trial and error method to generate a table of values with at least three pairs of coordinates that solve this equation. All right. I claim if x is 0 and y is 0 that they will solve this equation. So that one was an easy one to spot, right? If x is 0 and y is 0, we can clearly see that solves this equation, right? That pair of coordinates solve this equation. Now, what about other two points here? Well, let's see. I think I see something happening. Uh, 7 and 3 are what they call relatively prime. They contain no common factors. Well, I claim if I plug in a minus 3 for x and a positive 7 for y, do you see that the products will cancel each other out? Let me be more formal. 7 times minus 3 plus 3 times positive 7. Do those, does that pair of coordinates solve this equation? I think they do. I'll get a minus 21 plus 21 equals 0, and indeed that does check. So when x is minus 3, y is 7. Right. What's another th similar thing I could do here? Well, notice
if I plug in a 3 for x and a minus 7 for y, I think I get a similar cancellation with a different ordered pair. Let's try it. 7 times 3 plus 3 times minus 7. Is that equal to 0? I believe it is. Positive 21 minus 21 is indeed equal to 0. So I can say 3 comma minus 7 also solves this equation. Alright, so I've got three pairs of ordered pairs that solve this equation statement. You write it down again, 7x plus 3y equals 0. Let me go ahead and graph these two points, three points. 0, 0, that is the origin if x is minus 3, y is 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Puts me right about here. And if x is 3, y is minus 7. Maybe about here. And indeed, these points look collinear. I'll sketch a line connecting those three collinear points and label the line with the equation that generates it, 7x plus 3y equals 0. Label, label the axes. Hang on. Label the axes. And of course, make sure there's arrows at each end of the line. All right. We'll call it a day. Uh, this concludes section 2.2 in chapter 2, graphing linear equations in two variables.